We're here at the Pacific Slope Archaeological Laboratory, and we're going to talk about some of the technology we use to record artifacts and the things that we can learn from these technologies. So here to my right, uh, we have a replica of an artifact that is sitting on this pedestal that's turning and this other device over here that looks like a book on its end is spraying it with laser light. And the lasers bounce off the object, go back to a sensor, and it can measure its form. The geometry of it in a way that we just can't normally do with calipers or with a ruler. It provides us a data model of the shape of the thing that has tens of thousands of data points, if not more. And we can take that kind of information, do a lot of the traditional studies that we do about the length, the width, the thickness of the object, and we can go beyond that. What we can do with this is get us a better digital caliper, in a sense. We can go uh, and take our measurements in ways that are so much better, they're much more accurate. We can also render three-dimensional models of the artifact in a way that allow us, without even having the object in our hands, we can do the kinds of measurements that we normally would have to go to a museum to accomplish. So when the scanner completes collecting the data, the data actually comes into the computer as multiple scans that then need to be aligned. Now that process uh, takes a little while. It involves you know, going through matching scans up where they overlap, trimming out data that might have been um, having a few errors and such with it. So, and in the end, we can look at this scan that have been completed. And this scan is the series of data points that have had a surface laid over the top of them so you can actually see the structure of the projectile point itself. So we like to collect these digital models of the artifacts because they allow us to do some of the things that we traditionally are able to do, but in ways that are so much better. So this object and this object, obviously they look very different, but if you start to ask the question of what is really the way in which they're different? What are the different aspects that we can look at that help us understand their degree of similarity versus their degree of difference? And getting a 3D scan of these objects really helps us get into the mathematics of how artifacts are designed, how they could be similar in different ways, especially through time from an evolutionary perspective. It just gives us a better foundation upon which we can make our interpretations. This equipment actually has a, a error of 0 0.005 inches or 0.1 millimeters. They make really good representations of the artifacts and we're able to use that information to differentiate between different styles of points. Say for example if you have a point that looks like this that has length width thickness and you have two of them but the flake pattern is very different we're able to actually measure that difference using this equipment. What's even better is we can take this three-dimensional model and send it off to have it replicated. We can print versions of the artifacts that we work with and distribute them to other people. We can use them for ourselves, for education. Students can handle them in classes. Students can handle artifacts that you never ever would be able to get your hands on. So to us, this is a great advancement. It helps us to democratize the idea of museums. Museums have a lot of information that belongs to humanity that they kind of keep under lock and key. Now this isn't an evil plan, but what it is, is this a plan that's very practical to preserve them. But if we had three dimensional models of lots and lots of these things, everyone could experience as much as they wanted about the past in ways that are very tactile, very representative. These kinds of things give us an enhanced view of the past. So we're reimagining the idea of doing archeology span in a 21st century digital way.